he was something else. And he put us on to a lot of good songs from different people. One of those was a singer from North Carolina named Scotty Wiseman. And uh, we were talking about this, and I remembered a song that uh, the Conrad sang in his band called the Blue Ridge Buddies. And uh, it was an old Scotty Wiseman song. And uh, last night, as we were driving to Richmond, or yesterday afternoon, Somewhere. I guess it was, yeah, um, the song Semi came back to me. And uh, it's just a really neat song, and we will try it with you here for the first time in many years. Oh, we're going we're gonna to do it in uh, May. Sweetest songs belong to lovers in the gloaming. Sweetest days are the days that used to be. But the saddest songs I ever heard were words of parting. When you said, sweetheart, remember me. The chorus says, remember me. When the candlelights are gleaming, remember me, remember me. At the close of a long, long day, it'll be so sweet, it'll be so sweet. When all alone I'm dreaming, just to know you still remember me. Once I was yours and you were mine, alone forever. For all eternity But all our vows are broken now And we may never Be the same Except in memory Give it a try Remember me When the candlelights are gleaming Remember me Remember me At the close a long, long day, it'll be so sweet, it'll be so sweet, when all alone I'm dreaming, just to know you still remember me. A fairer face may take your place, now I'm a part because people's lives were changing. It's true. This was 1966. Bob had just finished his fourth freshman year of college. Because <laughs> they didn't have a major in folk singer, you see. And so he was running out of options, and he got that letter. But it was said, a great day when I did bring yeah. Ramblin' Conrad to my sociology class as my <laughs> term project. <laughs> a plus. <laughs> So you joined the Coast Guard, and uh, as you say in the song, 
somebody else got married and someone else just kind of got drunk and that was that. But Conrad kept on, but there wasn't anybody to save him from himself and haul him down to Herb Selby's and all the cool things you guys were doing. He was just like some old jukebox that didn't need a dime. He was just like some old restless wind. He was singing all the time. And if he was a prisoner, then living was his crime. But living was the song that he was singing. And just like some old hobo rambled all around. He was just like some old minstrel man on the streets of your hometown. And you were oh so quick to pass him by and so quick to put him down. That you never heard the songs that he was singing. So now I listen for the music and every soul I see. Some are singing soft as whispers, some are singing harmony. And if you take the time to listen to their patchwork symphony, then you'll learn to understand the opera of the common man. You'll recognize the songs we all are singing. Yeah, it's just like some old jukebox that doesn't need a dime. And he sang, there's a little bit of everything in Texas. Just look around and you may see. There's a little bit of everything in Texas. No matter where you go, just think of Texas, and I'll bet my boots you will breathe. Try it with us. Well, there's a little bit of everything in Texas. And he said, really, I'm not bragging, you see. Well, there's a little bit of everything in Texas and a whole lot of Texas in me. I think sometimes Conrad always thought of Texas sort of as the promised land for old worn out old time country singers. He definitely had a, a feeling about that kind of thing. But what happened was I went into service, and then I got out of the service and got invited to go to California to be a member of the writing team for the Smothers Brothers TV show, and arrived there just in time to drive over the San Bernardino Mountains and hear the radio say, the Smothers Brothers have just entered into a quarrel with CBS, and their future is indefinite. Well, I went there, and had a good time meeting all these people who were legendary people to me, people like Mason Williams and Steve Martin and Pat Paulson and all these other writers for the Smothers Brothers show. But after the show was canceled and three years of making ends meet in California, I came back to Virginia and uh, went to look him up and found out that he was in the Veterans Hospital in Kikatan, Virginia and had just passed away on Cinco de Mayo. Well, I kept thinking about him, thinking about all the songs I'd learned from him, thinking about that old guitar. And I thought to myself, I wonder what's become of that old guitar. 
that guitar that was his only real possession, that guitar that was the essence of his life, all in one little cardboard guitar case. And so I called the VA hospital and found out that they had an auction on December the 5th, I believe it was, and that uh, they were auctioned off all the things that belonged to the people who had passed away during that year. So I went with $100 in my pocket thinking, boy, I really would like to get that guitar in this auction. Smoke-filled room, 100 watt gloom, spreading from nicotine wall. Faces so bent, but too tired to resent the veterans auction hall. Where they're selling off pieces of somebody's life, slightly used for a dollar or more. Well, once they meant something, but nothing was gained, that's what they're selling them for. Well, I came to buy that old beat-up guitar, let's say it belonged to a friend. Ramblin' Conrad, well he died here last May, and that's all he had left at the end. Now they're selling his guitar, who'll give me three? I will, and I held up my hand. Sold for three dollars, don't seem fair to me. Can you call that the price of a man? But I walked away with tear in my smile. And if life's just a tune that goes on, then he knows that I play it every once in a while. And he knows that I wrote it. This song, and he knows that I wrote it. This song, and he could sing all night. Lord, he must have known a million songs. He made you feel all right. Till you knew you had to sing along. He was a picker. He was a cracker. He was a singer. And a singer. Sure did blow that mouth harp some fine. He was a tinker. He was a joker. He was a near beer drinker. A Paul Mall smoker and proud to say he was a mighty good friend of mine. Riff less chance really. He could sing all night. Lord, he must have known a million songs. He made you feel all right. Till you knew you had to sing along. He's here. He's here. William Conrad Bueller. Hey! Ramblin' Conrad. Now, you know there is an epilogue if you got time for a three minute song. Yeah. Long about a. And you're a after we finish up, you're invited to come out and play this guitar if you would like to and uh, check it out. It's this guitar was in jail 136 times <laughs> in his life. Uh, he was not. He was only in jail 135 times. But one night he loaned it to one of his buddies who had a few drinks too many, and his buddy got locked up, which made us believe that possibly it was the guitar's fault all along that uh, his escapades had occurred. But you're welcome to come up and join in on it. And uh, Gene made a great song when we discovered the place where he was buried. Well, this is one of those things. You know, Bob is, I won't call you a procrastinator, but... I am. Okay. It comes from having the name that starts with Z and being at the end of the alphabetic line for most of my life. But he'd been meaning to get up to Hopewell, but you know, life is busy and we don't know where we are half the time anyway. But, so in 2014, um, we kind of said, what? Let's go. Let's go today. But we couldn't. We went the next day. Um, 
And we didn't know that it was, uh, it was April the 9th of 2014, so not that long ago, right? You know, I was once going to write a book on procrastination, Gene, but I kept putting it off. <laughs> so we weren't thinking we'll about explain to you later. the fact that this was a Civil War cemetery at the mouth of the Appomattox River on April the 9th. Do we have any history fans here? <laughs> That's kind of a momentous day, so. Um, but when we got there, it was late in the afternoon, and it was all dug up. They were going to put down new sod for, uh, presumably for Memorial Day. Um, it was a it was a muddy mess, and we got there, and there he was. I mean, literally, there he was. Like, well, we're going to have a hard time finding him. Nope, there he was. And Bob had brought the guitar. Um, and Conrad's guitar. Conrad's guitar. And he started singing Picker and a Grinner, right? And so, okay, it was fun. It was nice. And then we got to the, the last chorus, sing all night, just like you guys were singing. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the wind, like a Scirocco, came out of nowhere. And the trees and the Flag. tag hanging off of that thing from the auction, flying in the wind, nearly knocked us over. I was taking a couple of pictures and mostly singing. I turned on the video. We got a little bit of video of this. We nearly fell over. We finished the song. We looked at each other and said, what the heck was that? And so we did some more filming. Bob talked a little bit about Conrad, and I'm looking around waiting for it to happen again, and it didn't. Um, although we have had some wind encounters, just letting you know about Conrad, that restless wind that you wrote about in the song. And so as we got the car driving back to Norfolk, we decided to memorialize it in song. Old friend of mine, give me a sign, travel so far, travel so far, brought your guitar. Won't you sing us a song? And the wind sang along to that old familiar song. Up here, up in the air, we heard you then. When the wind sang along. So long ago, we watched you go. We watched you go. Wasn't our choice. Wasn't our choice. We long for your voice. Won't you sing us a song? something we like to share and it never comes out quite the same <laughs> way twice and uh, it was kind of like Conrad he never came out the same way twice and uh, neither did the songs he sang and neither do you but anyway you're welcome to to come and uh, are those the original strings on Conrad's guitar no I've, I've changed them at like least actually I, I changed them since the last time I was here you actually. changed them in 2011 for the 40th oh, anniversary of the oh, folk okay. music club that you founded <laughs> and never since so but but in our, our archive, 
we curled up the old strings. Yes. And so they're in an favorite. envelope that says Connie's strings, so that's where they are. All right. There's a video of the wind sang along if you'd like to see the, the tree blowing and us nearly getting knocked out. And the, the 1970s version, we, when we recorded this, which is what somebody in Virginia Beach sent to Johnny Cash, when we recorded it, uh, it was done through Folk Legacy Records up in Sharon, Connecticut, that has ceased to be, except, except it was acquired this year by Smithsonian Folkway, so it will be available in perpetuity, and it's part of now the American folk tradition, and we are mighty proud and happy for coming. To be in there along with Woody Guthrie and Lead Belly and Pete Seeger and oh, all those folkies who are not around and he was no, here. That he admired but, so much. First and Bob Gibson too. Yeah. Where's Herb Selby now? Herb Selby is actually back here. Um, we bring him. Okay. Oh, good. Is the thing the Ramblin' Road Show and Homemade Hoot Nanny? It'll be here again tomorrow from noon to six. So come by and visit us. But if you're us. not going to be here tomorrow, come yeah. by and we'll show you Herb. He, yeah, Herb. Oh, we have to tell you this. You know, we we carry around many things of, of of folks' art that they painted, and Herb had no family. There's a theme here, and he was the guy who opened. The, the club where the gang all could come and make their music. He discovered Emmy Lou and he discovered, rediscovered Ramblin' Conrad, and he had no family. So we've got his urn there. He's wearing a lay. He's got a backstage pass. I'm sure he's really happy to be still coming to folk festivals after all these years. And there's a wonderful plaque that he received from the gang right. in 1988. You can see it and read it too and honor the people who bring this music, this folk music to other folks. Thanks for coming. Did you get a card? Yes. Great. Stay in touch. Okay. See you tomorrow. Come on back. Fine festival. We thank the Warmans for doing it. Thank you for staying. <laughs>